Alrighty, hello every folks, and welcome to the tier list. Uh, so this is going to be the weapons tier list, basically uh, anything that can fit into your character's hands. Now, let me say right off the get-go, uh, there's almost 300 things on this list. Uh, generally speaking, there are definitely going to be mistakes, and uh, there definitely might be some misrememberings over what exactly does what. Obviously, a lot of this stuff is new, but a lot of this stuff is old, and a lot of stuff has changed in terms of its overall uh, mechanics and things like that. So, I'm going to do my best to, uh, you know, uh, get this as accurate as I can, but uh, let's go ahead and uh, get this thing going. So, uh, let's go ahead and cover the actual tiers here and what they do, first of all. So, um, Insane is going to be weapons that are just straight up overpowered for when you get them, that uh, will be able to carry the fight on their own. So, for example, if you pick up the Balmung uh, between the other Knight Commander weapons, uh, the Balmung essentially gives you a uh, more or less powered up version of Rending Gale uh, with a uh, uh, with a Leaden uh, effect attached uh, that uh, basically doesn't even need to scale, it kind of has its own independent function as far as all that goes apparently I guess all the night commanders uh, do at this point but it basically gives you um, a Volax unique finisher. Uh, it doesn't cost anything to use, and the thing gives you insane stats on top of that. So it's going to be the first representation for the insane tier. Uh, powerful is going to be an item that is uh, going to be powerful all on its own, that will be able to carry a unit, and is generally not quite as completely busted as to end up in insane, but is going to be enough to be a game changer for when you get it. So for example, something like the Cat Bakna, or the Cat Club, as I like to call them, uh, essentially giving you a, a chance to poison on hit is going into uh, powerful. Pretty much everything poison related is going to be at the very top of this list, just throwing that out there right now. Um, but yes, uh, something like the Cat Claws, give it to a warrior, they've got multiple ways to guarantee that. Uh, essentially just going to be dropping poison, dropping percentage damage on top of the regular damage. Ridiculously powerful. Um, uh, great sometimes uh, is going to be something a bit more specific. Um, so, for example, uh, something like uh, we're going to go ahead and put the drum in here. Uh, essentially going to give you a nice little uh, boost uh, to your team at the very start. It's great in some situations. It's not going to be insanely overpowered, but it's a nice little slot filler in the meantime. Uh, average is going to be something that really isn't going to change that much, uh, but it is going to be, uh, you know, fairly respectable, again, as just something to fill the slots with, so for example something like the SPs gives a nice little strength boost and stuff like that, but it's really nothing too crazy to write home about. Um, uh, then for uh, below average, generally speaking, it's going to be items that are maybe not as uh, as beneficial as some of their uh, counterparts, um, maybe have a few little uh, weaknesses to them and stuff like that. Uh, so for example, uh, I would argue something like the, uh, the Boulder Bow uh, falls into that category this time around, and bear in mind, for crafted variants, I am counting the plus one variant, and yes, I am aware of how good the uh, the silence effect is on this, but for example, something like a short bow plus one uh, on a ninja that's able to uh, have that uh, silence guaranteed through their debuff is going to give you a guaranteed silence and a chance of stun, uh, give it an eagle eye, and then they have a guaranteed chance of both while having dramatically faster firing speed uh, than something like the, um, uh, the boulder bow by itself. Again, I would just put it as below average, just for when you get it, it doesn't really have the uh, the jump in power that it did last time, um, and generally speaking, it's a lot harder to implement, so personally, I feel like that's kind of when... The Boulder Bow falls into a weird metal category, where generally speaking, the Short Bow takes advantage of all of the uh, Toxic Arrow kind of stuff a lot better, whereas everything above it has a lot more benefits. So, anyway, that's personally where I feel that, that one lies. And then for the joke tier, uh, we have something like the, uh, you know, the Relic Brynhildr, uh, where that thing, um... You know that one dangly part of a donkey? That's what that thing can go interact with. Uh, basically, there's certain weapons that are just honestly more there as a trophy. Uh, the Relic Brynhildr is kind of a particularly cruel joke because uh, you have to do the uh, uh, the Coda 4 uh, trio fight and then still have something like a 4% drop rate on this stupid thing. That fight, even under ideal circumstances, can take over an hour. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. Uh, that thing can just go ahead and go over there. Alright, now let's, uh, with, with the rules firmly established, let's get going. Okay. Um, let's see in no particular order here. Uh, so Aegis, uh, all by itself, 
insane. Uh, it's going to be the best overall uh, damage reduction in the game. Uh, Medusa Shield actually did better uh, last time around, but this time around, it can basically turn any knight into an invincible brick. Uh, it's got uh, percentage modifiers for pretty, I believe, literally every single uh, damage type in the game. Uh, it's not actually that difficult to get either. I've gotten a couple of them, and you can end up upgrading it, so fantastic weapon over there. Uh, next up, uh, we got the Ambition. Uh, that's also going into Joke Tier for the exact same reason as the Relic Brynhildr. Although, it's... I mean, it honestly, it at least gives you Apocalypse, which is a unique function. Uh, but it's still annoyingly cruel to get a hold of. Uh, next up, uh, we got Beadbound Blade. Uh, it's going under average. I mean, it's it's got a good missile effect on there. It's got okay damage. It's If you're looking to hit an air unit, you know, ice coverage is all well and good. Um, it's not as crazy uncommon as some of the other two-handed katanas. I've gotten a good number of these ones. It's just that, honestly, you, pr you really don't want to be using them for offense that often. And, uh, you know, a couple shots of, uh, of uh, Ice Blast isn't really going to do the trick uh, for you at that point. Uh, Boreas is an interesting case this time around. It's still a one-handed axe, and uh, having that uh, coverage versus Earth is pretty nice. And actually, you can equip two of them this time, so you can potentially have a very interesting dual attack ranger build with double Boreas's. Um, so might be an interesting way to double down on uh, on like a wind unit. Interestingly enough, this does actually lower your power when um, uh, when using uh, your. Uh, I Actually, I forget if it actually lowers your power if you're using the Earth Finisher. Either way, uh, Double Boreas's actually did work out pretty darn well. Okay, uh, next up, Aqua Hammers. Again, in the strictly average category. You hit stuff with water, you hit it, you know, you, you have your water coverage on your hammer. The missile attack is really just a cherry tap. There's not really too much to say about that. Uh, you could kind of double down on this in the PSP version. It's kind of whatever this time around. Um... Ice crossbow. I, I would say great sometimes. Um, there's a lot of flying units uh, that uh, that are going to be wind element. Uh, having access to an ice element crossbow is going to be pretty handy for shooting them down, especially for uh, for something like a dragoon. So potentially a good use case over there. Uh, bastard sword going into average. Uh, two handers without debuffs are mostly just a good single hit weapon. There are better ones with debuffs, so that gets to sit there. Uh, most of the Balder weapons, uh, like, it depends. I would say, like, Balder Claw goes into below average. It, It's just something to hit stuff with. Uh, last time around, it was more of a caster weapon. You might be able to, uh, it's just, the more I think about it, it's just Balder Claw is weird. Because it is a, it's a caster weapon. Obviously, it's just the Balder tier in general has a lot of, uh, caster benefits. Um... It's just that, yeah, they, there's not really any particular reason to use it this time around. Like, last time you could at least use it as a uh, undead free damage modifier for your punchy units, um, but there really isn't a whole, a whole lot of overlap aside from Lord uh, that can both punch and cast at the same time, at which point you're really not going to be using the Balder Claw, so it gets to go over there. Um, Balder Dagger, I would say, is great sometimes because of a... Well, it, it's still a Stab Dagger. Interestingly enough, uh, the um, uh, the Damask Dagger switches over to Slash. So if you have... If you're running good... Um, uh, good piercing defenses. This could potentially be a better alternative to the Damask. Um, but generally speaking, it's just a dagger you put on a caster to give them a uh, parry bonus. So great sometimes. Uh, the Balder Hammer is going to be pretty good as far as silencing things. Um, I would say, again, great sometimes. Great for silencing things with that uh, extra benefit on the crafted version. But it's kind of just a regular hammer otherwise. Um, definitely average on the Balder Blade. Nothing really too special on that one. Balder Shield. Uh, strictly average. I mean, it's a nice middle-of-the-road shield. You upgrade people to it when they need it. It's the second light shield that you have access to. So nothing crazy specific, but, you know, it's there. Uh, let's see. Balder Cudgel is a weird one. Because as a weapon... It's complete dog doo doo. The thing is awful. But that being said, that slight bonus in range uh, on a Terra Knight with uh, like an MP or HP suck is pretty significant. So I would say it's great under very oddly specific circumstances, but otherwise kind of kind of meh, you know. All right. Next up, we got uh, what do we want to put here? Uh, nah, let's not do that one. 
the Kevin Kino, definitely, uh, that's going into joke tier. As a weapon, it's fine, but as far as instruments go, the rest of them have been buffed so hard that this thing is hilarious. Why on earth are you going to put misstep on, or are you going to put a, uh, a sidestep, or is it, no, it is misstep. Uh, it inflicts misstep, as in it makes units less likely to dodge your arrows that are 100% anyway. Cool. Great. Anyway, um... All right, next up, Butcher Knife. Great sometimes. This is an interesting one that it switches your uh, armor profile over to slashing. Could be very useful for Berserkers in that little niche when it comes up. Uh, what are these? Bronze Claws? Uh, below average. They do claw stuff, they said over there. Uh, let's see. Siege Bow? No, let's not do Siege Bow yet. Uh, Kaldia. Powerful. Uh, definitely, as far as I'm concerned, one of the best items for casters. Most of them will have at least decent mind scores, and it gives them a chance to potentially mind control something. Uh, plus, it gives them that parry, plus it's very lightweight, plus you get them for basically free, and they're good at all tiers. Uh, plus, you can actually also specialize in hammers and use these to gain access to the hammer finishers. Absolutely awesome. Uh, they're not, like, crazy overpowered, but hammer finishers in the hands of casters can actually be pretty good to uh, give them a very sudden uh, AoE or something along those lines. All right, next up we got the Bentisca. Uh, great way to finish off the Dragon Slayer set. Uh, it's great occasionally. Uh, other than that, it's just a fairly standard spear with an ice element. Uh, Balder Spear falls into below average for me this time around, mostly because it's trying to compete with the Scorpion, and when we get to the Scorpion, it's oof. Bronze Spear is going down here as well, just because it's like it's it's literally the crappiest spear in the game. It's got nothing special to it. It goes there. Uh, cane blade, average, broadsword, average. This has a nice strength bonus to it, but really just upgrade it to whenever. Uh, Firefly, um, or is this the Ashura? I don't know. We'll double check these later. <laughs> I want I want to look at those side by side. Um, all right, upgraded handgun thing. Uh, great sometimes. Very oddly specific. If you have a gun preempt kind of build going on, these are really good. Other than that. Uh, you kind of get it pretty late, so realistically, it's not like there's many other choices. So we're going to say great sometimes in the chance that you're actually somebody that uses it. All right, uh, Leather Cestus, nothing special, goes into below average. Wart Dart, insane. Actually, no, this is going to powerful because something better is going into insane. Um, yeah, Wart Dart is crazy. Uh, basically, if you have archers with Eagle Eye nearby anybody with a Wart Dart, that is a guaranteed charm and potentially several guaranteed charms. So really handy there. All right, next up in Insane, uh, Claymore plus one. Uh, arguably the best two-hander in the game. Uh, honestly, damage is f all well and good, but Claymore has just enough damage to be threatening at all parts of the game, while also uh, having the ability to breach on hit, which is just disgusting. Uh, not to mention you combine this with a Terranite, and you have one of the most powerful synergies that there is. Uh, basically, this is negative 15% to all like all categories of all stats for the unit through fear, and then plus 50% incoming damage from breach. Not to mention whatever damage they're already doing. Uh, not to mention uh, that uh, if you combine this with something like a uh, vigorous attack, uh, then that thing's not even dodgeable. So, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty nuts. So, all right, uh, next up. Uh, Cursed uh, 1HK. So, the cursed weapons I'm mostly going to categorize not based on their element, because they can be any element, and not off the racial bonus, because they can have any racial bonus, but for their very particular applications for what they do. So, for example, like with a 1HK, it's going into powerful, and it's just barely edged out for insane there. Um, simply because ninjas really suffer in terms of defense, their like defense and armor options are fairly limited, but this gives them more or less hyper armor in their primary weapon slot, so that is really strong. Um, something like the uh, the cursed bow again is going to be overcoming a lot of the the inherent weaknesses of their weapon type, so that's also going into powerful over there. Uh, same thing for the uh, the cursed crossbow. Many of the cursed weapons are going to go right here. Whereas, for example, something like the cursed axe, I would say is great in some cases, but not all. Uh, 
I would say actually the uh, the cursed two hander is probably going into average, because in most cases you can like there's just way better two hander options uh, for that particular case. Uh, insane for the cursed dagger for all of the above mentioned reasons. Although the downside is, in order to actually utilize this, you have to actually it's going down into powerful. Uh, you you do have to sacrifice uh, having a, a staff range to use this on a caster, uh, but still defensive stat very handy. Um, this is. Uh, cursed Fusil, same reason as the above-ranged weapons. Uh, cursed Stick, uh, great in some very oddly specific cases. Again, just very defensive caster. You still get the range bonus. So there's that. Book for the same reason. Um, you're potentially... Actually, I would say maybe Book and Stick go into Powerful because they can still they still get the range, they still get the defense bonus, so they're going to go up there. Uh, cursed Hammer, I would say, generally speaking... With both of these, if the unit has the stats to make them punch through, in most cases it's worth doing, um, and it gives them a nice little defensive edge, and they don't necessarily have too much competition uh, to uh, within their own weapon class to put them right over here. Um, we'll hold off on the other ones for the moment. Okay, Brimstone Bow. Insane, uh, especially for a code of four. Most stuff uh, will suffer from an anatomy bonus. This thing is anatomy plus fire make somebody something other than fire, and you suddenly have uh, potentially four different uh, elemental coverages on your longbow, uh, stack up a uh, like a, a double shot and a tremendous shot, and that thing is d disgustingly unblockable. Well, actually, and an eagle eye, and you basically have unblockable, like, insta-kill level damage on uh, endgame bosses, so beautiful. All right, uh, next we get to the Lombardia, uh, which I'm going to put as insane it's not as insane of a weapon as it's... Actually, let's just put it under powerful. So, it's really good in that it gives you early access to counter 3, uh, right in chapter 4 there. Uh, gives you the ability to parry and counter at the same time. The weapon itself is pretty darn solid. It's one of those weird cases where a double sword build basically has it all. So, like, Buccaneer with, uh, with uh, dual one-handers uh, can actually work really well with the Lombi. Um, it's just a great overall thing. It ends up working just fine into Chapter 4. It can last you pretty much forever. Um, it's the first of the countering night swords that you can get a hold of, so beautiful stuff. All right. Uh, cursed Instrument goes into Joke Tier. Yeah, no thanks. Uh, cursed Fist. Uh, I feel like it's below average, just because there are better fist weapons by far. It's not quite as bad as the Instrument, though. Uh, cursed Whip. Uh, I, I don't know, I feel like that's pretty average. Uh, Cursed One-Hander, way better One-Hander options than the Cursed One-H. Uh, Cursed Spear is... Mm, it, on something like a Fencer, uh, wherein they're looking to be close range, but they want that extra defense, it's really great in that situation. Um, as a defensive weapon, as an offensive one, not so much. Uh, Shaitan's Belova... Uh, it, it was pretty great. Um... Like, damage-wise, it was pretty alright. Uh, actually, no, I'm, I'm gonna say great sometimes. Like, it's it's good damage, but damage by itself isn't really much of a selling point towards the endgame. Seemed like a weird hot take, but yeah, it's just... There's a lot of, like, usually when it comes to, uh, to weapon ratings and things like that, generally I see it as it's either got an insane bonus that can scale crazy well, it's got some debuff on there that can work particularly well, uh, or it's got the stat bonuses to make all of that uh, enough to stack up to something real. So, for example, this thing has, I think, like, 20 attack or something over its peers, whereas many of its peers also come with, like, plus 10 stack, uh, stacked uh, stat bonuses all over the place, potentially giving you way more than that through raw stats rather than attack value. But again, it just kind of depends. All right. Next up, uh, original Lombardia, I would say, personally, I view this as being way more valuable than its technically more powerful cousin over here in this one. Because when you get this, you're not just getting a really good stat weapon, because it's got great stats for when you get it, it's got great stats that it's going to be boosting that particular unit, but additionally, it's giving you the ability to use Resurrect on any of your melee guys, which suddenly gives you a yet another like big strategic option to potentially play around with. Uh, having a knight, for example, with uh, the Lombi and the uh, the Brynhildr was uh, was basically what I carried on my main tank, going all the way through POTD. It was just a great combination between those two. 
So great synergy between the two free swords this time around. I thought it was it was just really solid. All right. Next up, the Crescent slash Cupido bow, because I don't have them separately on this list for reasons, and that goes into insane tier. Guaranteed mind control from like a mile away. It is nuts. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put that there. Uh, all right, card goes down here. Goodbye. Damask blowgun, why? Uh, battle axe, strictly average. Um, right, next up we got the Damask Axe. Uh, that's going into uh, powerful here. Uh, if you combine this with a Vigorous and a Berserk uh, and a Sanguine, you basically have half the HP of, something, of several units melted, guaranteed stun in, an, in a wide arc AoE. So you're deleting their turns, you're deleting their health, you're just giving them a bad time overall, and it is wonderful. All right, next up in Insane Tier, right next to, and actually I would argue slightly above the Claymore here, is this way plus one. Stats-wise, way lower, but it's also a lot faster to swing and will basically give you the same effect if you're using it on a Terranite. So, use that as you will. Uh, Boulder Axe, for the above-mentioned reasons, you are strictly average. Uh, all right, made a little bit more space. Let's move on here. Makwahadl, uh, gray sometimes. It's literally just elemental coverage. It's okay stats, I guess. It's just a... Uh, I almost want to put it into average. It's just very expensive uh, to actually invest into. Actually, a lot of these uh, 2 HKs are. Um, uh, Lacquer Steel, same thing. Just a lot of the 2 HKs are just direct upgrades. A uh, little bit of a bummer, honestly. Okie dokie. Uh, big pokey stick. Uh, the... Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, the Bardish? Uh, strictly average. Everything's just using them around that time. Buckler... I mean, great sometimes. It's a good lightweight shield, good for bashing stuff around. No particularly insane bonus for it this time around. It's just going over there. Uh, clear crack. Uh, great sometimes. Also a little bit questionable uh, as to why they haven't just invested in a belt. Um, Arquebus. Uh, below average, because honestly, by the time you can make this, you can make the commander gun, and there's no reason to use it. Uh, Siege Bow, Average, or is that the Composite? I don't freaking know, because they look near identical. Go figure which one is which. Um, either way, they both go there, they don't have a bonus, so I don't care. Uh, Boulder Sword, uh, Average. Exactly average, like, it, it just is what it is. Um, alright, so this is gonna be a weird thing, but I'm gonna put these two crossbows right next to each other. The reason being, the, the one-handed crossbows for when you get them, um... So, they're really, 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 really good on tanks this time around. Because of the fact that uh, finishers seem to scale off melee type of damage, you can very functionally have somebody running around with just something like a shield, just shield bashing stuff into position, and then using them strictly for their finishers. And Brimstone Hail on on the, uh, the one-handed crossbows is kind of nuts. Actually, we're going to put this one over here as, for the same reason. Um... Because all of them, for all intents and purposes, are more or less interchangeable. Are I mean, arguably, these two are these two can kind of go either way. You use the Boulder for a chance to silence. You use the uh, uh, Damask for a chance to stun and slightly more power. And then the Bow Gun is just kind of meh as far as that goes. Um, but it can still get the same effect as all three of these uh, earlier on. Because once you get ten, uh, or once you get Crossbows ten, you get access to Brimstone Hail and Brimstone Hail is ridiculously strong um and under most circumstances can just be used as a, just as always as a grenade launcher meaning that a, uh, a a fully tanked out unit with brimstone hail is a very effective strategy and for quite a while i just had two of them running around on the flanks and the two of them could basically pincer anything into a puddle and it was really really handy um not to mention a lot of things seem to have an inexplicable weakness to ranged weapons uh Probably most notably, uh, Dorgalua. So, like, for example, something like Dullbind, despite the fact that a direct uh, weakness to a particular weapon type is almost unheard of for the whole rest of the game, certain boss-type enemies are just weirdly weak to crossbows. No idea. But for some reason, it's a thing. So, yeah. Um, for some reason, they completely demolish the end boss. No idea. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Damask Dagger, uh, great. Sometimes, again, switches you over to a slashing priority for your damage. It's not, like, crazy powerful or anything. Uh, having access to a ranged, uh, uh, kind of finisher if you're running daggers as your, uh, weapon type for that, uh, caster unit can be really strong. 
Um, it's a great way to have a little bit of extra coverage. Uh, but by itself, actually, I would almost argue it goes in the powerful, actually, because it's a chance to stun. It's uh, it, it does give you a different uh, type of uh, kind of armor priority. Um, and again, all caster types can use it. It's pretty handy for that particular situation. And it gives you access to, again, those uh, dagger finishers, which are going to be really handy for your casters to give them something to uh, to counter some of those uh, some of those units that they might not otherwise have an answer for. So we're going to go ahead and put that over there. Uh, next up, we got the staves. Uh, these go into average. Reason being, everything else in their category is just going to do the same thing they do, but better. Uh, there's little reason to actually match the element uh, of your particular staff, except for visuals. So, yeah, you can use them to inflict an averse on that unit, but realistically speaking, you might as well just attack them with uh, the actual spells that unit has instead. It's kind of a niche case where you can technically boost your next spell's damage by 15% if you bash him with a stick and get lucky. It It's a little bit too weird to plan around, so we're just going to leave that there. Um, next up, uh, Damask Spear. Yes, its upgraded variant uh, does have the potential to double stun, that's all well and nice. Um, it's going to go ahead and sit over here, though, if that's okay. Just because, let's be blunt, it's... Uh, to actually guarantee that is... I mean, obviously, there's a lot of ways that you can potentially guarantee these things, but when it comes to the Damask Spear, it's just... It, there's way better things in that category to uh, to really worry about. Um, so, personally, I feel like it's too expensive to really be worth the upgrade. Alright, Synthalotal's Rib, great sometimes, it's great for elemental coverage, uh, its bonuses are kind of oddly specific, it doesn't have too crazy stat bonuses otherwise, I believe it's got Acid Rain on it this time around if I'm not mistaken, uh, so that's going to get to go there. Um, same thing for the, uh, uh, the Cursed 2HK, going into great sometimes, it can work very well for a defensive Swordmaster, um, but again, they are still a Swordmaster, so it's kind of meh. Um, Tolwar, or not the Tolwar, is it the Tolwar Cutlass? There we go. Uh, going into great sometimes, because False Strike on a counter build, uh, you'll actually see this in, a, in an upcoming video, uh, but uh, Cutlass with a Elemental Shortbow is actually a really good alternative to something like a Smoke Screen, or a Smoke Bomb. Um, just uh, giving you a nice way to uh, to add some uh, some nice evasion to all of your frontline uni units for basically free. Uh, Dactus Hammer uh, is pretty powerful, even on its own it's pretty darn good, part of the Evil Deed set, so really strong as far as that goes. Uh, Francisca is not supposed to be here. Um, Alright, Damask Sword, again it goes, mm, it goes into great sometimes. Stun Effect, uh, it's a nice little alternative to the whole Breach combo up here, like Fear plus Stun, pretty strong. Okay, uh, next up, Ashura. Uh, great for POTD, kind of iffy otherwise. Stun Claws, I mean, great sometimes. They, they're good in an AoE on a Berserker, but, uh, I mean, Cat Claws exist, so we're gonna, you know, leave that there. Uh, Daedalus Gauntlets. Uh, I'm gonna put this in, into joke tier. Um, their thing is they've got a luck bonus. <laughs> Which is cool, and like, I, I like luck bonuses and building luck units and whatever else, but it's like, dude, you just cleared Palace of the Dead for this crap, and you're gonna tell me that it's just a basic gauntlet that's got a bonus, like, luck bonus on it? What the, what the hell is that? Um, okay, next up is Kashua's Necklace, it's average, it's just, it gives you caster stats, you can't use it on anyone else anyway. Uh, this is gonna seem weird, uh, the Mask Mace is going into powerful. Same reason as the Boulder Mace, but higher this time. Again, as a weapon, it sucks. As a weirdly specific boost to a Terror Knight as a suppression unit, fantastic. Uh, Durndal, eh, great sometimes. It's got good stats and a good elemental bonus. It gets to go over there. Um, Damask Sword, really nice to have uh, have on most double attacker builds. Just a double chance of stun, so you can basically guarantee stun without guaranteeing stun. Uh, elemental shields we're going to put into into powerful because they can cover your uh, elemental weaknesses. Um, all right, uh, Damask shield, strictly average. Uh, what else we got here? Colchrium. Colchrium and Unicorn spear go into... Uh, I still want to say average. It's just with spears, there's a couple of very, very, very sharp outliers. 
All right, had to make a bit more space. Let's move on here. Uh, Chris Dagger going into average. There, actually, this even goes into below average, just because it's one of the few that uh, like advanced uh, caster classes can use, and there's very little reason to actually use it. Uh, Great Bow, below average. It's pretty much deleted as soon as you get it. Uh, Halt Hammer, pretty much same thing. Again, Morningstar replaces it pretty much immediately. Uh, Ishana, pretty powerful. Uh, nice, uh, good, uh, meaty hitting weapon. Great stats on it. Uh, interesting elemental coverage for it uh, that uh, complements its uh, its finisher set pretty darn well. Uh, Glamrock, pretty much same thing. Going into powerful for that reason. Euros. Uh, I feel like as always, Euros is just pretty average. It it doesn't really complement its uh, its uh, setup particularly well. It's not awful. It's just why would you use it compared to the other stuff next to it? Uh, Fafner is kind of insane. Uh, double attacker, um, uh, kind of double attacker uh, Fafner unit. Uh, can basically replace a Dragoon without uh, having any cost associated. Uh, let's see. Uh, Iron Fan, great sometimes. Nah. No, we're going to put it into great sometimes. Surprisingly good attack value and all of that. Um, a lot of classes can use it, can guarantee a stun effect off it. It's not bad. It's fun to mess around with. Uh, crossbows. Everything other than bowgun is going to go into a into average or below average. Uh, this is what I'm looking for right here. Insane. Arguably, in my opinion, one of the best weapons in the game, the Dragon Fang. Um, you get it off your um, uh, off of the, the uh, crafting book you get out of the Elemental Temples. A lot of units can use it. Um, a very wide variety of units can use it. A very high chance to uh, uh, poison on impact. And uh, again, daggers have one of the stronger finisher sets, so absolutely excellent weapon for anybody that can use it. Uh, definitely going way the hell up there. Uh, Dark Spear, I felt was pretty average this time around. This was one of the strongest weapons in the PSP version. Honestly, I just was really underwhelmed by that thing. Um, all right. We're going to have... I, I should have just put crossbow tier as its own thing. They're not terrible, it's just how the hell do you tell this apart? Um, Alright, heavy axe. Eh, great sometimes. It does actually last quite a bit. Uh, actually, no. It, like it, while it does have a lot of longevity, and it's very free, it is, it's strictly average. Let's put it there. Um, I'm going to... You know what, whatever. Damask blowgun goes down here. What are you doing? Um... Great sometimes for the Femex. Uh, where did I put the other elemental wands? Uh, probably under average, right? Where are you? There you are. Okay. We'll put that over there. Uh, Ember Wake. Uh, great sometimes. Nice uh, potential synergy with uh, getting that 10% extra damage if uh, running a fire build. Pretty strong hammer. Uh, one handed, so pretty darn strong as far as that goes. Uh, the ice swords are, uh, they're actually pretty powerful, all things considered. If you're going for a raw damage kind of thing, the ice swords do last you for quite a while. Um, I would say, though, that the, uh, the Daedalus sword goes down into joke tier for the same reason as the Daedalus gauntlets. It's just, while it's not awful, it, you, it's such a massive disappointment when you first get it. It's like, seriously, what the hell did I just go through Palace of the Dead for? Um, okay. Uh, Damask Hammer, same thing as the Damask Claws. It's a nice AoE stun option for Berserkers. Nice potential fear stun combo for uh, Terror Knights. Uh, potential guaranteed stun for Warriors. But they're heavy and have better options, so we'll put that there. Uh, Chikmok, average. Uh, Desert Blade, average. Terror Axe is, and Slash Dragon Axe is pretty average. Uh, books... I don't know. Books are weird. Okay, this is the the Grand Grimoire. Um, we're gonna put it under great sometimes. It's it's a two hander. That that's the problem. It's got the range, but it's a two hander. Like it's got great stats, but it's a two hander. So you lose the parry. You get a slight stat bonus. <clears throat> It's like, if you have somebody that's very specialized for this particular thing, and also relying on book finishers, it'll be good, but... I don't know, I can't recommend that for anybody else. Uh, Dirk? 
Uh, potentially very powerful in the right hands, can last uh, quite a good chunk of the mid game. Um, it's not a cheap upgrade, but I would say it's pretty valuable for uh, having that uh, uh, silence effect on there. Um, Dragon Claws are going under great sometimes. They can finish off the, uh, the Dragon Slayer set early. Uh, same thing with the, uh, the Dragon Hammer. Dragon Shield, I would say it's pretty powerful. It's got some of the best uh, scale down of a lot of incoming magic attacks and things like that. If you're having issues with uh, dealing with summoners, Dragon Shields do actually handle that pretty well this time. Um, technically, I should have a second thing for the Ancient Dragon Shield as opposed to the regular Dragon Shield. Despite that, the Ancient Dragon Shield is the one you just made, and the regular Dragon Shield is the one that you find in an ancient cavern. What the hell ever. Um, they both wind up fairly similar stat-wise, so we'll leave that there. Okay, uh, next up, Balder, Balder 2H, Average, uh, all of these two-handers and other katanas are going firmly into Average, because there's just too many, and all of them are basically the same deal, <laughs> so we're just gonna put them over there. Um, I know that seems a little, like, reductive for an entire category, but it it's frankly the truth. Uh, it's just how it goes sometimes. Um, okay, here, let's just readjust this a little bit. There we go. Alright. Uh, below average for short sword. More of these longbows that folks probably won't use. Uh, earth bow. Uh, it's great under certain circumstances. You know, pretty good for dealing with lightning units. Uh, more below average for 1HKs. Let's see, mage blade. Doesn't get its undead bonus this time, so that goes down there. Sage Shield, great under very oddly specific circumstances. Psy, below average. Uh, let's see, Pellet Bow goes down here. Uh, Ogre Blade. Anything from insane to powerful to anything in between, you use this to body snatch units, it's pretty neat. Uh, powerful for Sweet Blade, it's the only 2HK that I would say actually is uh, worth using towards the end of the game, because, it's, I mean, it's the best one. Uh, gives you a chance to summon, so if you have a uh, caster unit that you turned into a uh, uh, turned into a swordmaster for some reason, it gives you a nice little kind of like frontliner support summoner kind of situation. So that's pretty good there. Bibliono uh, Tomier, you get bonus people damage. I don't know what you're doing, just running up and hitting them with a Bible, but screw it, that goes over there. Supple Whip is pretty funny. Um, I would say it's great sometimes. It gets rid of high health units, as in it gets rid of their 15% uh, of their total health. So that's neat. Um, Scorpion is going right up here, actually right next to the Dragon Fang for being insanely busted. Again, you, as Lord, you can combine this with uh, uh, Lament or Terrifying Impact for guaranteed poison. <laughs> uh, guaranteed uh, double tile poison and fear, which is, again, just freaking hilarious. Erasian, powerful, gives exorcism to your frontliners, very uh, handy to have there. Um, uh, Pajra, very powerful bow. Um, uh, not a, it's weird because it's technically, statistically, way more powerful than something like, like the Cupido bow and stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, it's, uh, it, like, it's, it's a boss weapon uh, that relies on raw power, which is not really necessarily something that the archer specializes in. Um, they specialize in breaking through defenses, and once you do that, yeah, it's going to do pretty good. Not as good as the brimstone bow, mind you, um, but in terms of, like, raw power, it's it works. It does the job pretty well. Uh, God rays, or the Hotspokados rays. Actually, no, that's these ones. Um, I'm going to put it into joke tier. It's not that their damage is bad. It's just that it's trying to apply a casting effect to classes that primarily have no casting stats whatsoever. So that gets to go there. Uh, short bow plus one, powerful. Uh, very good uh, if you can guarantee uh, any kind of effect on it. Uh, if you have eagle eye anywhere nearby, guarantee any kind of ranged effect on it. That is a guaranteed stun with very light weight. Um, I would say great sometimes for the rapier. Same thing as the cutlass. It's giving you that uh, false strike effect on there. Um, Thunderbow. Interestingly, it is again great sometimes. Gives you a counterattack three, can potentially be very handy. Same thing for uh, for the wind variant here as well. Uh, Ogre Shield, pretty darn powerful, can complete the Ogre set and also get that bonus on a one-handed weapon, so that's pretty good there. Uh, Rimfire, great sometimes if it's the build you're going for. 
Um, Damascus crossbows on here twice. What's up with that? I don't know. Um, Exarch staff, average. Uh, Dread shield, average. All of these 1HKs and 2HKs and whatever, they go down into the disappointment pile. Um, they've got little minor variations in terms of giving you bonuses for your different elements and things like that, but they just simply don't have the push through to really exploit it under most circumstances. Alright, Korra is average. Dark uh, Claw, Cerberus Claw, whatever that goes into there. Pinion Blade, though. Um, I would say is actually great under very specific circumstances, especially something like a fairy. That's really good there. Uh, long gun, again, great sometimes, great for sniper builds. Except longbow is average. Mega staff is great until you get something better. Lepel staff is fairly average, disappointingly. Um, Melitza's, same thing. It, everything is Melitza's staff. Like, everything staff wise is Melitza's staff. That's. That's more or less what it comes down to. Um, Mage Staff, I'm going to put under below average, just because while it is average, the... Uh, actually, let's just put it as, as average. It's the first one that you can upgrade to get a little bit of bonus, uh, like two, uh, two bonus range, but the cost to do so is kind of up there. Uh, claws, you can improve your claw damage, but it's still going to be pretty average next to the other options that are available. Uh, honestly, most of the claw weapons fall into that category. Drop them under average. Same thing for, uh, uh, for again, more staves. Damask blowgun, you're funny. Uh, kidney spike, again, standard average weapon. Same thing for the gladius. Crossbow, crossbow, crossbow. There we go. One of these is the one that gives you the, the beast bonus, which I think is this one, in which case it goes under, under powerful. Um, but yeah, uh, Nifrit, uh, powerful, but a pain in the neck to get a hold of. You just have way better options for that by then. Not to mention poison is so reliable on just any basic one-hander that, like, this will do the job great. It'll give you a counter poison on a melee unit. It's just kept out of insane tier because of how much of a pain in the neck it is to get. Like, the, the Balmung is up there because while it is a pain in the neck to get, it insta-deletes stuff. Um... Whereas the whole poison strategy, it's really valuable on, you know, f basically free weapons, weapons like these ones, but kind of falls behind once we're looking at other things. All right, uh, this shield, where the hell, hide kite shield thing, uh, goes under below average, I forget its name at the moment, uh, Kumbira is high stat wind sword with a uh, sword bonus, it's just going into average. It's, uh, I mean, maybe great sometimes. It, it's just, it's boosting in an unnecessary direction. Um, more below average katanas. You go get into that pile, please. Um, Rotter's Knife. Again, under average. It's very oddly specific. Um, Holy Comet. Pretty good and under the right circumstances. Good in Palace of the Dead. Kind of iffy everywhere else. Uh, Damask Shield uh, goes into Average. Same thing for the Stabs. That goes there. More Katanas for the Katana Pile. Okay, uh, next up, the Musket. Uh, goes into Great sometimes, because it's going to be pretty much your main rifle uh, for any Fusely users for quite a while. Uh, Tabbers in below Average, just because, I mean, it. Uh, we're going to put it into Average. Never mind. Sanction, pretty good finisher, great sometimes, pain in the neck to get a hold of, you know the deal. Moving on here, the more average weapons for the average pile. Uh, Layla is going up here, into great sometimes, uh, very good for uh, clearing sand bronze, especially with a lot of the sniping lanes in there. Uh, more katanas for the katana pile, prox is great sometimes, if it's the element that you need, it's strong enough to make that work. Uh, some of the stuff is definitely on here more than once. Uh, average shield is average. Rompea is just n another average weapon that is not one of the debuff weapons. All right, Rosebud Whip uh, goes into powerful. You can potentially guarantee a charm on this. Great on a warrior unit, but there's just way better ways to uh, to inflict charm. It's fun, you know, for what it is, but it's kind of whatever. Uh more crossbows for the crossbow pile. Here we go, the tambor. 
is going into insane. Uh, so the Tambor is basically a large, free AoE uh, uh, regeneration uh, for your entire party. Which basically means that everybody's health just went up by about 30 to 40 percent, uh, potentially even higher. It is completely not so. If you happen to have rolled the ability that doubles the duration of your songs, that stacks with this. So you potentially have more or less doubled everybody's health uh, for the uh, for the foreseeable future. So that's nice. Uh, Lesker's beloved, great but situational. Um, same thing for the uh, uh, the Adiferous Waster. Great but situational, more katanas for the katana pile. Yeah, I don't have a very high opinion of uh, katanas in general this time around, as I did last time. Like, last time the 1HKs were just overpowered through being busted, this time around they're just kind of whatever. Hash... Yeah, I... No. <laughs> no thanks. Um, I'm waiting for one weapon in particular to come up, but we'll get to it. Uh, great but situational, Ice Axe, uh, Assassin Blade, same thing, great but situational. Pretty handy in um, uh, in San Bronza, but that should be obvious. Uh, Moonblade, pretty strong. Uh, again, Ice Two-Hander, there are better options, obviously, but it's good for what it is. If, if it's what you're looking for, it's pretty great. Uh, the... Uh, what is it? Not the Pavana. Is it the Pavana? The Pavana, the, the anti-human spear. Very good. Anatomy bonus, uh, uh, you can potentially stack up for a Giga Tempest. Uh, for a Lightning Specialist, it's exceptional. Uh, very good uh, stat bonus on this. A little bit of a pain in the neck to get a hold of. Not nearly as much as the Night Commander weapons. Um, but yeah, great weapon there. Uh, Rahula's. Um, great sometimes. Pretty much all there is to say about that. Uh, Rune Axe. Uh, powerful under the right circumstances because it's really good on somebody like uh, Princess, for example. Fandango. Situationally very strong, more staffs for the average pile, uh, more axes for the axe pile, what else we got here, hand axe, okay, hand axe is weird because it's in a unique situation where through chapter 1 and 2 it's got one of the better vitality bonuses, so it's situationally very handy there, uh, petrodart, again great but situational, uh, maul is average, uh, regular Crescent. Uh, regular Crescent is pretty average. It's just, like, Crescent is good, but it's the materials in order to make it into the Cupid bow up here. Um, what are you? I forget which one you are, but most of the blowgun... One of these is toxic, one of these is, uh, not. Either way, they both go into the, uh, great but situational pile. Uh, Medusa Shield is... I think He'll, again, great but situational. That one Petrify might be pretty good. And its stats are pretty good. It, it's just not nearly the insane ultimate shield that it was last time. Uh, Alright, we need to expand this even further. Okay, is it hard enough to see yet? That's what I thought. Okay, more average spear for the average pile. More average crossbows for the average pile. Volcatius uh, feels pretty average to me. It like okay, it's again one of the Night Commander weapons that's it works. It's just given the effort required to get it, it's not really mind blowing. Um, all right, Exorcism Staff uh, would probably say is the best staff. I'm gonna put it under Insane because you get it fairly early. It gives you free Exorcism. It just frees up an entire spell slot for you. You can use it on practically everyone. It's just pretty much worth using all the time. Uh, Valiant Dagger, great but situational. Uh, more katanas for the katana pile. Here it is. The other greatest weapon in the game, uh, the Volish plus one. One of the first weapons you get is still one of the best. Breach plus fear on a spear that's, that's guaranteed and potentially unavoidable. This still works on Night Commanders in Code of Four. Completely broken. All right, uh, Lavella's Harp, put you into pretty good. Yeah, all Katana's gonna go down there. Scarlet Dagger's pretty average. Wise Man's Staff is hilarious because it has all these stats and all these bonuses on a staff that completely doesn't matter. Uh, Walloon Sword, average. Lightbringer, below average. I just don't really like those very much. Um, Zephyros, fairly average, considering that it's supposed to be a wind god weapon. Uh, Walitas, 
uh, good for Palace of the Dead. Uh, where the hell guitar thing is? Um, probably pretty average. We'll put that there. Um, Tlalox Bolt. Uh, great if you need the elemental coverage. Got good stats. We'll put that there. Other super busted weapon, Tiger Bung Nah. Gonna go right here. Uh, basically the Cat Claws, but better. So we'll put that there. Shamsher up there. Snub Fusil, great, but very situational. Uh, Rudger's Braid. Eh. I don't, I don't remember that being particularly great. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I'm not sure. Um, uh, more Katonos. Stickers pretty meh. Sentinel's Reb, I'm pretty sure we already have on there. Guitar is very expensive to upgrade and honestly doesn't really give you much extra. Hand Axe we already covered. Civil Staff is crappy on purpose. Eggersil Gnarl, pretty average. I mean, most of what's left is pretty average. Um, I, I forget how you're even supposed to pronounce this. Situational, good stats. Let's put it like that. Uh, Lightning Mace thing, same exact thing. Rumpaya, pretty average. Warhammer, pretty average. Stuff is pretty average. You get the general idea. There's a lot of things that fall into the average category. There's certain things with debuffs that are just insanely good. Or in the case of the Exorcism staff, it's just a very specific uh, kind of, uh, I would say more of a support type purpose that's just very unique to that particular item. But yeah, a lot of this stuff is strictly going to fall into average. Uh, I forget why exactly there's multiple of these. One of these is the, uh, one of these is like the light, or the, uh, the rude bow, I believe that's what it is. Um, either way, those are pretty much average across the board. They, they're pretty strong, but it's really the finishers that you're using them for. They're, it's just kind of going to depend on your particular situation. Uh, great, but situational on the Trueno's, uh, scales, uh, spiked laurel, laurel is pretty average. Or Yanny, as it were. Stone Drop Blowgun, uh, average, because there's better ways to do it. Uh, Joked here for the Lazarus Staff. Same reason as the Wiseman Staff. Uh, another fairly average crossbow. Sagara. Uh, potentially really, really strong, but very oddly specific. Also works on Terranites. Uh, 1 HKs. Uh, I forget what this start does, but we're going to put it with the other ones. Again, with the great but situational. Uh, restoration staff is pretty average. That heal bonus is something you could get off anything. Average, average. Uh, do we not already have the Resenzi on here? I mean, it's it's fairly average by the end anyway. Uh, Pandero, average. Average, average. Uh, I'm pretty sure we already covered one of these. Great, but situational, average. Mm. See, basic whip is pretty underwhelming. Um, which one are you? I think this is the MP stealing one, in which case we're going to go over here. But these icons have gotten so tiny I can barely tell. Uh, wait, no, 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 you were, you were the damage dealing one, in which case, yeah, you go into great, but situational. And then we get into powerful right here with the bow gun plus one with the stun effect on there. Okay, so that is at least my take on a tier list on this whole thing. Obviously, it's a little bit of a long one. Um, also, apparently, I've had this this wing from the Switch here in the, in the background, uh, just to show it's kind of back here, playing the music, as it were. Anyway, that'll be about that for now. Uh, let me know what y'all disagree with, because I know for a fact there's always going to be disagreements. There, It's just the nature of the beast, so to speak. All right, y'all have a good one. Take care. And uh, looking forward to getting roasted. Later.